Welcome. In the interest of safety, we would like to take this time to advise you of our emergency procedures and to point out the location of the exits. You will be informed by an announcement or the sounding of the fire alarm system in the event of an emergency requiring evacuation. In the event of an emergency, we ask that you leave in a calm and orderly fashion through the exits nearest you, which are identified by exit signs. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to the calendar conversion celebration ceremony. This is the first time that I actually lead one of these things and I read my own words. So you see me looking down, that's because I never done this sort of thing before. I always speak from memory. Um, <clears throat> our ceremony this afternoon is enriched by the presence of ex and expertise of our professional sign language interpreters and real-time captionists. We thank them for their important work in facilitating access to this event. I am Fernando Navera, director of the Calendar uh, Conversion Project, and um, it is my privilege to serve as MC at this event, which recognizes the formal spirit and the massive accomplishment and personal commitment of the faculty, staff, and students who have participated in and supported the calendar conversion process we started back in 2010. Uh, <coughs> when the provost initially asked me to lead this charge. I had mixed feelings. And uh, <laughs> on the one hand, I thought this was a great opportunity to do something significant for RIT. But on the other, I figured uh, there would be headaches and uh, sleepless nights. The second part actually materialized quite frequently. Uh, <laughs> But you know, I mean, these are the nice words I have to say. The, the reality is that I thought it was a very cool uh, um, opportunity. And uh, I thought it was, a, it was a cool job. Today, as I stand here before you, I think it is a cooler job because I'm actually directing a project that no longer exists. <laughs> Nobody wants it anymore. And uh, I really have nothing else to do. So. <laughs> This may, be, this may not be very wise words as I stand here because of the cast of characters sitting right here next to me. They all have power over me, <laughs> with the exception of Frank. So uh, I suppose, <laughs> I suppose uh, uh, the provost and I are going to be having a conversation very soon about what I just said anyway. <clears throat> But many friendships were built around this project, and I'm thankful for the opportunity I've had to work with many of you. The process of the calendar conversion, as you know, involved a complete review of all of our programs, um, to switch them from the 10-week uh, calendar to the 15-week semester term, to the longer term. Each academic program we offer had to be reviewed had to be converted from course to semesters, approved by the department, college, ICC, grad council, and finally by the uh, academic senate. And then the Office of Academic Affairs sent each program to New York State for approval and registration. Additionally, we had to build uh, outcomes for each one of these programs. Uh, um, Anwal and her crew helped quite a lot with that. Um, after we thought this through, we had to create the famous IAPs and advice of our, uh, our students, every student that was transitioning from quarter to semesters, of a plan for them to complete their work on their semesters. So it's not negligible effort by any standard. At the same time, Another very large group of uh, uh, team of individuals work, work tirelessly in the conversion of the student information system, the SIS as we know it today. Each project in and of itself took a, was a tremendous, tremendous undertaking and they both changed RIT forever. 
All of this would not have been possible without the efforts of truly committed individuals and the committees in which they work. The calendar conversion impacted every facet of life at RIT and the committees we created as well as the existing governance committees assessed and planned for the changes accordingly. Their, their names are scrolling behind me because it would take me hours to name them all. The full list of calendar conversion members and SIS members and uh, other affiliated groups, governance committees and whatever will be, uh, uh, has been included in the, in the time capsule that we'll be uh, putting in the ground shortly. In celebrations like this, it is difficult to name specific individuals and groups for fear of leaving someone out. But I'm about to take that risk. <laughs> because there are individuals that I would like to recognize here today and groups of people that have worked very hard in this undertaking I'm sure that you will all agree that it is worth uh, mentioning them. The first, the first one is someone who injected much energy, professionalism, and dedication to every aspect of the conversion by taking a multitude of roles. We did not know each other before this project started, and in that regard, I'm very thankful uh, that I had that opportunity. I hope you'll all agree that Shan McKenzie deserves our gratitude and recognition. Shan played a key role in aspects of the conversion that touched both the calendar conversion and the conversion of the SIS. She also worked tirelessly with the Institute Advising Office. A great leader of this university who practices what he preaches is known by many of us for his ability to get things done. For him, being on time is always the thing to do. He has made a difference in ways most of us do not even realize. Students may not know him, but every time they log into their SIS accounts, they are thankful that the information on the screen is complete and reliable. Please join me in recognizing Joe Lofredo as the indisputable. <laughs> Joe is the indisputable registrar of registrars. <laughs> um, we travel together, by the way. Sometime I thought that if I were to rob a bank, I would like to invite him as one of my partners because he likes to drive. <laughs> so, <laughs> and he would drive the getaway car very quickly. <laughs> Shan would be invited too, by the way. She gets things done anyway. <laughs> It's been said that every organization becomes an image of its leader, and the registrar's office and the council of scheduling officers are reflections of Joe's personality and work ethic. I'm sure you will also agree that our academic student advisors and scheduling officers deserve a standing ovation for their work, commitment to RIT, and our students. Please join me in congratulating them. Thank you. Now, if I were to rob a bank, I would not invite Frank Cost to be a part of the team. <laughs> and the reason is that he would take pictures of everything we did, <laughs> from the planning, to the execution, to the getaway, to landing in Bahamas or whatever. And he would shoot uh, videos of everything we did. And then, uh, unhappy with that, he would start publishing books in Amazon with everything we did. And then he, will, he would upload the videos to YouTube for everyone to see. <clears throat> now, because of that, I would be very leery of inviting him, but he's been a great partner in, the, in this celebration. He produced a, a video that I'm about to let you uh, uh, see here, and I will let the video introduce itself, and then we'll have Frank come up here to share some thoughts with you. 
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Frank Koss from the School of Photographic Arts and Sciences, and I'd like to show you a little montage of the video interviews that we're including in the time capsule that the President will be placing later this afternoon. So take a look. When I first started here, way back in 1951, RIT was in fact on semesters. And so that 11-week quarter system, it really encouraged you to kind of, you know, take your jacket off, roll up your sleeves, get on the grind, and, and try to produce some amazing results. But at the same time, after quarter after quarter of going like that, you kind of burn out. The committees were great. The staff were, were magnificent. The faculty, the department chair, the leadership of the university was just tremendous. You know, it didn't matter how much stuff we threw at them, they actually got it done. And that's why we're sitting here today. Well, you know, the, the biggest challenge, of course, was the, is the academic shift. And uh, there, Provost Hafner uh, and his staff have played a very important role in trying to lead that. And, you know, we had to send every one of our programs back to the state for approval, and that's, that's not a simple thing to do. Uh, so I'm really grateful to him. Uh, but I think we had so many people involved. We also decided to change the student information system at the same time. Uh, that's actually been more problematic. Uh, and again, uh, you know, the, the patience of the community has been extraordinary. We've had a lot of uh, sort of fits and starts with that system, and even now, uh, we're still working on it and trying to get it back to the point where we think we'll, we'll see some real benefit from the change. Uh, but I, I will say that, again, the community's worked very, very hard, and uh, they're working as well as they can to try to uh, make this a really positive thing for the campus. We now have a currency that we didn't have before that is freely traded. Obviously, credit hours are now the same, but more importantly, people's time is the equivalent. So faculty who have extensive research programs and need to collaborate with other faculty at other institutions are more in line to be able to have those successful collaborative projects going. We're going to see more research done as a result of that. Um, we're going to see more study abroad internationalization of our curriculum and our students' experience. So the uh, semester conversion process provides an ideal opportunity to revisit the entire structure of the, uh, of the whole curriculum in our department. My mantra last September, October, November, and, and into you know the depths of IAPs was everything is going to be okay. We've kind of become two bodies, one person <laughs> on this project. We, we help each other think and, and get through. So you can start anytime. Anytime. Have we been rolling all this time? Yes. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> So I've been in many situations in front of hundreds, if not thousands of people talking about this transition and saying, it's going to work. It's going to work. And inside I'm thinking, oh my God, I hope it works. Oh my God, I hope it works. Well, so, so and let me just say one thing. I've been stopping people who started their sentence with well or so, and you started it with well, well and so. <laughs> <laughs> you really want to hear my take on the semester conversion? Okay. Wait a minute, no, so there's two questions. Okay, so what am I talking about again? Conversion and the benefits of conversion? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is for people who are going to be looking at us long after we're gone. Right. Brenda will still be around. Right. right but you and I. You and I will be gone. Right? Yeah, we'll be, we'll be having fun someplace else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I lived through it, semesters, quarters, and now back to semesters. The pendulum does swing. Yes. When we were finished with the interviews, we weren't quite satisfied that we had shown enough of the RIT campus as a backdrop and that people 50 years from now would be interested to see more. So we decided to fly this little remote controlled drone with a camera attached to it around the campus from various viewpoints to show what the campus looked like in the fall of 2013. And I'd like to show you a sampling of those videos right here.
I'd like to express my gratitude to everyone who agreed to be interviewed for the time capsule. It takes a lot of courage to do something like this. Um, and I am very grateful that, that there were people who, who did so cheerfully. Once we told people that their images and words would be packaged in an airtight container and buried for 50 years, and that they would not be seen by anyone alive today, they, re they relaxed. <laughs> I did also tell them that I might take little snips out to make a little video like this. So uh, Laverne McQuiller, uh, please don't be angry with me. <laughs> The act of creating a time capsule is one of simple generosity on our part toward our institutional descendants in the future. It offers a welcome escape from our regular duties and responsibilities. We are not trying to sell them anything or convince them of anything. There is no political agenda and no worry that we will not be intellectually impressive enough. We know that they were, that they were, they know that they will think that we were hopelessly old-fashioned and primitive, and that we wore funny clothes. And we don't really care. We'll all either be dead and gone, or so old we will just laugh at it all. So thanks to everyone who participated. It was a lot of fun. And I promise that I erased all of your original videos from my hard drive. <laughs> Thank you. Now it is my Now it is my pleasure to introduce our Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, Jeremy Hafner. Thank you, Frank, for your work on the video and, of course, for your introduction. I want the audience just to close your eyes just for a couple of seconds. Close your eyes, get in a relaxed state, and I want you to think Fernando and Frank together on a team planning that video. Just think about it. think about the possibilities, and then you'll come to realize just how much of the of the footage we had to cut out of that video in order to show it today for you all. Uh, Frank, I do hope that someday you will be able to make the uncut version available at some sort of uh, indie video film festival, maybe at the uh, Fringe Festival at some future date. Then. I hope you make it 3D because when you requested those 3D glasses uh, to, from my office to be covered as those costs that, that said semester conversion, the next dimension, um, and then when I said no to that, I, I hope you will continue on with that idea. We are here today to celebrate the beginning of a new era for uh, RIT, one that would not be possible, would not be possible without the efforts of hundreds of students faculty and staff who contributed countless hours to the calendar conversion process. And on behalf of the administration, we deeply appreciate the many additional responsibilities you have taken on to guide our university through this transition. And really, words cannot do justice to how proud I am to honor and acknowledge these efforts today. So rather than try, to put words around this, I'm going to do what an entrepreneur these days will do, and that's use crowdsourcing to honor and acknowledge your work. And this is where you all come into play. I'm going to, I'm going to identify a few groups, and at the end um, of all those groups, I'd like to hear the crowd uh, acknowledge with a wild RIT cheer. So the first group uh, is a group that had to get started working as soon as the decision to go to semesters was made in February 2010. Every academic program, all 222 of them, was reviewed, was questioned whether it should move forward, in some cases was retitled, new assessment plans had to be developed, and each one had to be redesigned, approved by the RIT governance process, and then sent off to New York State. In addition, they had extra ad hoc committees to make the conversion work and approve the programs. The ICC and the Graduate Council had to double its size in order to work to get through the work. The Academic Senate had to revise all the policies to accommodate semesters. And the General Education Committee had hundreds and hundreds of courses to review. And of course, every single course that is now running this week had to be redesigned for a 15-week semester. 
They did all this while still delivering outstanding educational experiences to our students, performing research that is increasingly getting the acclaim of others internationally, and still serve their professional societies. These are the faculty of RIT. Just a minute. <laughs> the next heroes. The next heroes had to support the work of the faculty by getting the paperwork completed and meetings scheduled and minutes taken. They had to develop processes and forms so that the program approval process could go through smoothly. They had to advise thousands of returning students. Over 10,000 individual advising plans were created. They updated thousands of web pages. They had to take the Oracle product and make it work for RIT. And we know it wasn't an easy task. They had to carefully ease student angst. And they did all this while still providing superior student support for our retention efforts, for our athletics, the residence halls, the food and dining services, the list goes on. These are the staff of RIT. There is one last group though, one last group that the crowd should acknowledge. And these are folks um, that are really the reason why RIT is here in the first place. They're the ones who learn from our faculty, who are guided by our staff, who graduate and do incredible things all the while being RIT alums. But many of them also played instrumental roles in helping the campus convert to semesters. They served as social media liaisons to their colleagues. They tested the registration system. They served as advisors to us in the planning of the conversion. And they did all this while still taking classes and working on projects, and writing papers, winning swimming meets, hockey games, and lacrosse matches. They are the students of RIT. So take a look around all of them. See that what brought us to this day was the work of not hundreds, in fact, but thousands. Thousands of dedicated individuals that make up the RIT family. Okay, crowd. This is where crowdsourcing comes in. I want you to give us your acknowledgement. Let's tell each other what a great job everyone did by giving the biggest cheer possible. Let's hear it for everyone who made this conversion possible. Yeah. That was worthy, that was worthy, thank you. Well, together we are positioned to move forward as a stronger, more focused university. Yes, we celebrate a new era today, but I'm convinced that our ethos has not changed. We are and we will remain a highly engaged community of individuals dedicated to making RIT a premier career-oriented, innovative education institute like no other. These are exciting times at RIT, and I look forward to working with all of you in the coming year, knowing that together we can still exceed expectations even during a period of great transition. So thank you again from the bottom of my heart for all that you have done to make this conversion process a reality. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce my colleague, Jim Waters, Senior Vice President for Finance and Administration, who found the money to make all this work. And he will be followed by Charles Brown from the RIT Board of Trustees and the Chair of the Education Corps Committee. And after Charlie, we will hear from President Tesla. Jim. So I appreciate Jeremy's crowdsourcing. I appreciate the fact that there were thousands of people who were involved in this. Um, but you know, that's kind of an average in the sense that there are contributors who are somewhat below that, and then there are high achievers who contributed a lot, so it averaged out that there were thousands. I'm here to try and really bring some recognition to some folks who were at the top end of contribution in this process. Um, I have the honor and the privilege of bringing forth some of the efforts of the group that worked on SIS. Um, and it's really an honor for me to call this group out because 
for those of you who haven't been as close to this process, um, we wouldn't be here today if we didn't change out the legacy systems of RIT. It just would have been totally impossible for this conversion to occur. We challenged this group with getting this done one year faster than it's been done at every other university. So they had a really short runway to get this thing done. So think about the enormity of changing out a 35-year-old legacy system and doing it a year faster than all other schools have been asked to do. Um, it's been an extraordinary effort on the part of these staff, and they come from admissions, financial aid, the registrar's office, student affairs, student financial services. They come from the application and development folks in uh, the ITS group and other members of ITS, and people from budget, people from accounting. You would not have any clue of how many hours, how many weekends, how many holidays this group gave up sitting over there in that 1829 room or little um, conference rooms around this campus to make sure this thing happened. It's an extraordinary effort. I have to tell you that it was headed up by Jean Caceres and I personally want to thank her for an extraordinary job. She told me she could spend $20 million, and she did, um, <laughs> because that's how much this system cost, to give you an idea of the magnitude and the far-reaching nature of it. Um, alumni, alumni affairs will be better served now, having access to this, and there'll be modules service, servicing them. This institution is now positioned um, you know, for the efficient frontier of running its information management systems and providing real data to the president uh, and to the provost and others for decision-making purposes. I mean, it's just been an extraordinary task. To give you an idea, I think the registrar's office alone changed 14 million lines of code just in certain of their modules. 14 million lines of code got converted over. This past two months, uh, before, if you wanted a transcript, you had to call the registrar's office and ask them to produce a transcript. Now, people can actually do it online. They're unofficial, but over 70,000 transcripts have been produced in the last two months alone uh, by students around the campus checking up to see where they're at or people who are active. We had 2.3 million cumulative quarter credit hours converted to 1.509 semester equivalent credit hours in this conversion. When you think about those numbers, it's staggering to understand the work that's been done and the way in which this group has embraced it and got it done. So uh, there's just been uh, unbelievable work done by this group. Um, I thank everybody here. Um, you know, we are um, blessed as an institution to have such a dedicated staff, um, a dedicated faculty, uh, and so um, I just wanted to personally thank you and um, I think my message is done. Now, I do have, and I was asked by Sue Provenzano, do I have anything to add to the time capsule? So I thought long and hard about this. And you know, I've often been accused of having the first dollar I ever made. <laughs> For many of you who know me, I, I am a bit frugal. Um, so I thought about it long and hard and I am gonna contribute the first dollar I ever made. <laughs> I figured that, you know, 100 years from now, if you look at the current returns on currency appreciation, <laughs> this dollar will be worth about 1,024. So, and I suspect that 100 years from now, there won't be, you know, paper currency. So it should be a lot more valuable than that. And I suspect that I will be able to take in development now a gift value of 120,024, <laughs> given how they count. So, <laughs> it's a little dusty, but. It's my privilege and honor to introduce to you Trustee Charlie Brown. He is the chair of the Core Education Committee. Dr. Brown. Thank you very much, Jim. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I want to say how happy I am to be here for this landmark celebration. As an alumnus and as a trustee, I'm excited 
about the change to the semester academic calendar and for the supporting implementation of the student information system and what these two changes mean for RIT's future. These changes will enable current and future RIT students and faculty to take more complete advantage of the academic and life learning opportunities available here at RIT. We congratulate the entire RIT community on a successful conversion to the semester calendar and implementation of the new student information system and look forward to marking many more important accomplishments and milestones. And now it's my honor to introduce the president of the Rochester Institute of Technology, Dr. Bill Dessler. Yep. I have two major announcements to make, uh, one of which is that uh, as of today, the quarter mile is being changed to the semester mile. <laughs> And, uh, and anyone who calls it the quarter mile from now on is expected to contribute a dollar to the President's Fund for Excellence. <laughs> this fund is uh, at present, uh, shall we say, severely underfunded. <laughs> so I'd appreciate an honest uh, contribution every time you refer to it as the quarter mile. Uh, second decision is that uh, really, I mean, I, I couldn't be any more grateful than I am uh, about your contributions that have made this point in time possible for RIT. And, and as a reward, I'm going to give you a Monday off. <laughs> <laughs> Generous, huh? Yeah, yeah. Actually, that is one of the things about the quarter system. We, we figured out a way to get Labor Day off. You know, so it was remarkable, wasn't it? Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Look, this semester conversion was a long and complicated process that involved the collaboration of the entire university. It was a lot of heavy lifting, and I want to thank everybody who oversaw everything from converting individual programs from quarters to semesters to the implementation of our new student information system to ensuring that every student was personally advised during the transition period. Truly an amazing effort. And I think we should give a special and big round of applause to this guy right here, Fernando Nevez. <laughs> but I want to know here, you can finally go back to teaching software engineering? Is that going to happen? No. I am confident that the calendar change will positively impact the quality of the educational experience for our students, including, I think, the potential for improved student retention and graduation rates because of a somewhat slower academic pace. And I think also that will enhance opportunities for students to recover from illnesses and other interruptions in their studies. I think the new calendar, as you know, will also include an optional January intercession for students who find, fall behind in their programs or who want to shorten their time degree, or want to work intensively on student projects, or for that matter, want to go study abroad for a short time period. And a stronger alignment with other colleges and universities will allow the scheduling of winter and spring breaks at times similar to those adopted by other institutions. Our students now have a better chance to see old friends during the academic year and to participate in cross-institutional education and public service programs that are increasingly offered during these break periods. And the new calendar will not affect RIT's traditional academic rigor. In fact, I've had several students come up to me and already tell me they think it's harder. <laughs> I don't know what the faculty are doing, but we will continue to produce students who are rigorously prepared to immediately make contribu contributions in the workforce. That has been our MO, and it will continue to be so. So thank you all once again. Let's welcome this new era to RIT, and I guess we're soon going to take our time capsule and go outside and very good thing. Thank you, Dr. Destler, for your kind words. Now we are at the, at the time in the program that we have all been waiting for, the placement of the time capsule. The calendar conversion time capsule will store uh, objects from the conversion process for future generations to see, including the DVD, a dollar <laughs> <up> here. 
a proclamation from the Board of Trustees, a calendar comparison posters, photos and presentations from the SIS implementation team, and a couple of, uh, and, and a complete list of the individuals and groups who worked to make uh, the conversion a success. So being RIT, we had to involve our engineering faculty and students in this, in the creation of the, of the, of the um, uh, time capsule. Uh, Nick Greco and Tema Francis are two students from mechanical engineering who uh, help us do that. They are not here today, but we thank them for the work. They were led by uh, uh, Ed Hensel, chair of the mechanical engineering department, and Rob uh, Reinick and Jan Manetti, senior mechanical technicians for mechanical engineering at the K. Gibson College of Engineering. They designed the PVC capsule complete with pressure gauge and filled with argon gas to preserve and protect the contents uh, of the, of, 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 of over the next five decades. Um, that's the, the picture of the capsule. And we're told that they have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, the beauty of the, of the tank capsule, as some have already mentioned here, is that the great majority of those of us who were interviewed for it will be long gone when they open it. I have actually asked my son and daughter to move away from Rochester <laughs> and if they can possibly go back to Mexico during that year, that would be great. <laughs> they don't want to see everything I had to say. <laughs> so, um, I ask that you uh, please remain seated as the President, the Provost, Dr. Waters, Mr. Brown, and Dr. Lever, uh, Ms. Jen Santoro, a staff council representative, um, and uh, Harshida Sud, representative from uh, student government, and I head outside to place the time capsule. You will be witness to this placement through a video feed that will be shown here on the screen. In the meantime, we have the honor of being serenaded by one of RIT's finest capella groups, a beat measure who will perform while we're waiting for the time capsule uh, placement to begin. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. We are AP Measure, RIT's original all-male acapella group. We are extremely honored to be here to serve as a little bit of entertainment while they go and put a nice big orange box in the ground. <laughs> we have a couple songs for you guys. Hope you enjoy. Celia, you're breaking my heart. You're shaking my confidence. Jubilation, 
she loves me again. Yes, yes, I fall on the floor and I'm laughing. Ha ha she loves me again. I fall on the floor and I'm laughing. Whoa, 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 oh, whoa, oh, 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 whoa, 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 oh, whoa, oh, 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 everybody, whoa, 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 oh, 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 Thank you very much. That is our 
right time. We, we, I think they're, they're ready for us to you know, put stuff in the ground. So thank you for having us, and we hope you guys had a good time. of the calendar conversion time capsule. We are live from outside Reader Eyes Arena, and in a few moments we will bury the time capsule. Before we do that, I invite uh, Trustee Charles Brown to read a proclamation from the Board of Trustees. Charlie? Thank you very much, Fernando. Whereas the Board of Trustees of the Rochester Institute of Technology recognizes the strategic importance of changing RIT's calendar from quarters to semesters to enrich its tradition of academic leadership and quality in higher education. And whereas the board acknowledges that the conversion of RIT's academic calendar ran concurrently with the conversion and implementation of the new student information system and other major university-wide initiatives and Whereas the board acknowledges that while these major projects were underway, RIT faculty, staff, and administration remain committed to our students by providing them with outstanding academic experiences. And whereas the board acknowledges the dedication and commitment with which RIT's faculty, staff, and administration in converting 222 programs over the three years of this project, and whereas the board acknowledges that by this date of July 11, 2013, over 14,000 students had registered for over 45,000 fall 2013 courses, and over 10,000 students had received an individual advisement plan. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Rochester Institute of Technology hereby expresses its appreciation to RIT faculty, staff, and administration for their dedication and commitment to our students, as well as their exceptional contributions to the growth and advancement of the university during this transition. And be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Rochester Institute of Technology so hereby proclaims August 29th, 2013, as RIT Semester Tiger Pride Day. This proclamation is signed by the Chair of the Board of Trustees at the Rochester Institute of Technology, Brian H. Hall, and dated July 2013. The Board of Trustees unanimously approved this proclamation and look forward to this next chapter in RIT's history. Let's give everyone a round of applause who is responsible for this. A copy of this proclamation has been placed in the time capsule, which we will now put where it will remain for the next 50 years. Somebody want to help me? Thank you all for being here. Have a wonderful academic year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.